July has come, and many trees and vines in the garden stand naked, their skin exposed to Mother Winter's harsh breath. While the nectarine tree sleeps, spiders are busy weaving and repairing their webs, suspended from her limbs. I watch them weave and marvel at their fine and delicate work. This month, inside my cave, I am finishing two little projects, a little fairy wren and a chair, perfect for a fairy. This week I discovered the work of Frances Brown. She was born in Donegal, Ireland in 1816 and was a remarkable talent. She was born blind, but in her darkness, she conjured the most exquisite imagery, especially of nature. I adore her poetry, and I was particularly taken by a verse from her poem called Streams. It goes like this. Ye early minstrels of the earth, whose mighty voices woke the echoes of its infant woods, ere yet the tempest spoke. How is it that ye waken still the young heart's happy dreams, and shed your light on darkened days, O bright and blessed streams? I adore the little minstrels of the earth, especially robins and wrens. Whenever I see a superb fairy wren, I travel back in time in my imagination to my family home. There, I am standing close to our fairy tree in the front yard. Underneath, my mum and I planted bulbs, including daffodils and bluebells. And much to our delight, they blossomed in spring. Meanwhile, the fairy wrens hopped, chirped, and sang in the dappled light. I was so sure that their song was for the fairies, beckoning them to come and play. My little chair is made of paper, matchsticks, clay and paper roses and has taken some weeks to finish. At the beginning I hadn't planned on making a fairy chair. I was just playing with paper and after a while I stepped back and realised what I was making. Fairy chairs are magical as Frances Brown recites in her book, Granny's Wonderful Chair. In the story, Snowflower, a young and pretty girl, is living with her grandmother. Her grandmother passes time 
sitting in a chair with a velvet cushion made by a forest fairy. As she sits, she weaves and tells her granddaughter stories. Then one day, Snowflower's grandmother has to travel north and leave her granddaughter behind. Before she leaves, she tells her that in her absence, the chair will tell her stories so she won't be lonely. All she had to do was lay her head on the chair's velvet cushion and say, Chair of my grandmother, tell me a story. In my imagination, my mini chair carries the stories of the enchanted forest. Furniture, ornaments and objects are bundles of stories. And these stories give life meaning. And on this note, I bid you adieu, Wonder Weavers. Many blessings to you and your kin. Take care. Stay well. Chidi. Thank you.